Welcome back, and today we're taking a look at update 11.5. This one seems to have come out a little bit quicker than usual, but maybe that's because 11.4 took a little bit longer. To start off with though, this image here. It shows the Awami alongside the black, and I gotta say that's a little bit strange since if we look for the Awami in this article, yeah, it's not here. So I don't know why it's on the promotional material for update 11.5, but I guess it's going to be coming out in the future, I hope. Uh, looks to be a lightly armored tier 9 Japanese battleship with pretty good secondaries, seemingly similar to the accuracy of the premium American battleship line. And well, if they are Harugamo turrets, they're going to have some decent pen as well. It's just the armor that might be the downside to this ship in a brawl. As for the major parts of this update, it is US Independence Day coming up, and because of that, we're getting some themed content. There's gonna be a new commander, and well, the San Diego is finally coming out. Unfortunately, it did get power nerfed recently, so it doesn't look like it's going to be a great tier eight cruiser, but maybe it'll be all right since it shoots sap but the DPM might not be so amazing. Think of this like a tier eight Austin that's been nerfed a little bit. More importantly though, the US destroyer models have been updated. And this is a big one for me because I've always felt like the gearing is just too big. It's just a gigantic, easy to hit ship. And well, the Yu Yang has traditionally been a better ship when it wasn't nerfed. In its nerf state, it was pretty brutal, but Having a smaller hull that's harder to hit is always going to be a good thing. And here we can see that in these changes, yeah, the gearing is getting much, much smaller and much harder to hit. The biggest parts here, the maximum hull width is two meters smaller, and it's actually over a meter lower in the water, which is really, really nice. I can see this being a nice buff for the gearing. The ships are all getting a few other changes as well, but you can see the Fletcher, Benson, and Mahan, they're getting small tweaks, but not huge ones. It also looks like they're changing a few other things about the gearing here. Notably, we're getting a little more HP in the bow, so that won't quite saturate as quickly. So if you're pushing bow in, you're going to take a little bit more damage. But the stern has slightly less HP, so if you're kiting away, you're going to take slightly less damage once that saturates. I think the other interesting thing is the torpedo angles are a little bit different. Currently, the torps can fire at all angles. As long as that uh, major torpedo angle indicator is there, you can fire both sets of torps. But it looks like they're going to be changing that a little bit. But to compensate for that, the rear launcher can rotate 360 degrees. So no more waiting for that to rotate across the entire ship when you swap from one side to the other anymore. Of course, the Vermont line is also getting a bit of an update, a bit of a buff, probably. The shell velocity is way slower, so at longer ranges, it's going to be very hard to hit your shells, but the ships are getting tankier, they're getting more armor, and more importantly, the heal. You're getting a fast cooldown heal, just like the Ohio, Georgia, and Massachusetts, and that heal is going to be healing back much more permanent damage. Stuff like torpedoes hitting you, citadel damage, bullpen damage it can heal a bit more percentage of that back than a standard battleship would. So these buffs are definitely going to help the Vermont line be better in close range, but probably a little bit worse at longer ranges. Convoys are also returning in this update. A few changes, they've split the convoys in two or three now. So you have more ships to protect and more ships to go after on different routes, which might vary up the gameplay a little bit, Unfortunately though, aircraft carriers and submarines are also allowed to participate in this game mode, so it's no longer a safe haven away from those classes. The French cruisers are of course still in early access. If you didn't see it, I did have a video on the Cherbourg already and it went pretty well. Honestly, I was pretty shocked with how good it was. I can't wait to actually test out the rest of the line now, but they seem a little bit niche and a little bit odd to play. so. Maybe not the, ba the battle cruisers for everyone, but I seem to like them so far. We're finally also getting the Faroe Islands map in the game. This one has been in the works for quite a while. This was, of course, a map that the players and the community helped decide the theme for. 
We'll see how it plays. I hope it's one that allows for some aggressive plays without just the usual camping islands that prevent any sort of pushing. Personal challenges are going to be back in this update. This is a great way to earn a little bit of coal, community tokens, that kind of thing, just by getting high base XP in a lot of different shit. 1v1 brawls are coming back, and this is always a fun game mode. In round one, we're going to have tier nine ships, and in the second round, we're going to have tier 10 ships. This is going to be a lot of fun, and I look forward to playing this one quite a bit. Now on to the continued testing of submarines in a live environment. Unfortunately, Wargaming has decided that for the last three, four, five years that, well, subs are quote unquote ready for the live game, even though they're changing them every single patch. Buffing, nerfing, it's ridiculous. Honestly, it just goes to show that these have not been thought out at all, and someone higher up has just forced them into the game way, way before they're ready. It's really, really disappointing to see out of a company that should know better, honestly. At this point, after the CV rework disaster, they should have seen this coming, but I guess they haven't learned from their mistakes in the past. The only positive about this is the matchmaker updates here. We're going to have limitations on the amount of destroyers and submarines combined, so we at least might be getting away from those games where there's no ship spotted ever in the game because everybody's trying to operate from concealment. I hope that's the case, but we'll see. I can't wait to play again and hopefully see some more surface ships that I can actually shoot at. This of course is the downside of these submarine changes. This update, they've tightened up the arcs for submarines to fire their torpedoes. What this means is there's more consistent ability for submarines to shotgun people pop up right next to someone, right in front of someone, and guaranteed land all their torps. Before, there was a bit of RNG when it came to the torpedo angles, whereas now, they're gonna be lasers. It's, uh, there's really no ch random chance here. If a sub pops up in front of you, you're dead. Have fun, guys. I know I certainly will. A little footnote here for other matchmaker changes. We can see that they're trying to reduce the amount of double up tier games, which, is great, honestly. I've been having a tough time playing my mid-tier ships because I just hate being bottom tier, two tiers lower, and having to carry games that way. It's very, very difficult to do. So it looks like 37.5% of the time is their goal for having two tier up tiers. And that is hopefully going to mean that we see more plus one, minus one matchmaker. And I, for one, would love to see these changes be even more aggressive. Like I mentioned earlier, the Vermont line is getting some serious buffs here. The main one, of course, is this repair party consumable duration. It is really, really nice on the Ohio line, and getting this for the Vermont means it's going to be able to play at closer ranges much more consistently. Unfortunately, it does come with the drawback of the shell velocity, but we're also getting better concealment. So. The ability to play at close range is being emphasized here. And a little bit more armor, a little bit better heals on top of that. We can see the Citadel and Torpedo damage being healed back up to 50% up from 10. These are pretty big changes and is going to make the Vermont line pretty good at close range. Of course, don't forget, if you want a free day of premium, it's a good idea to just check these dev blog notes and collect that. We're also seeing some slight super carrier nerfs uh, nothing too major there, still brokenly overpowered. There's a lot of new content being added or changed in some of these sto stores and shops in-game. New patches, commanders, that kind of thing. We're also seeing some of the Transformer collaborations come back. So if you want these uh, camos and updates to the game, you're going to have to gamble for them in these premium containers, <laughs> which... Uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty typical, pretty typical collaboration, right? Just some boxes that you have to gamble on which one you actually want. Yeah, not the best. And we've also got a few other small bugs and improvements being fixed, which is always nice to see. Overall, I really don't view this as a very major update, but I'm looking forward to testing out the Iwambi when that comes out, hopefully. I also am very, very close to having enough steel for the Mecklenburg, so you can expect some videos and a full review on that ship coming up. Although I can't really see it being as good as a Borgone. So if you're wondering about it right now and you just have to pick something, 
Forgone is the best choice possible in the uh, steel shop at the moment, I think, especially for battleships. There's a few destroyers and cruisers that you might pick over it if you're a DD or a cruiser player, but if you're looking for a battleship, or you can't go wrong with the Forgone. It's one of the best battleships in the entire game. And that appears to be it for 11.5. I hope you guys enjoy the update. I'll be testing out some of this stuff and definitely enjoying the 1v1 brawls. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.